he decided to approve 211 percent more international students. He decided to lift the ban on temporary foreign workers in communities with already high unemployment. If the Prime Minister is hunting for the quote-unquote bad actors who ruined the system, will you have a look in the mirror? Yeah. We put forward a plan two weeks ago to reduce immigration levels by 20 percent. Canadians expect us to be responsible and to react to their needs. That's what we're doing with this plan. The parliamentary budget officer himself has said that this new plan will reduce housing needs by 50 percent. The government and opposition going head-to-head -head on immigration as the House of Commons returns for its final stretch of the year. The exchange prompted by a new video in which Prime Minister Justin Trudeau lays out why his government plans to slash both permanent and temporary immigration levels. In the nearly seven-minute video, which now has over 500,000 views on YouTube, Trudeau discusses the need to increase immigration following pandemic lockdowns to boost the labour market, but says bad actors have since taken advantage of the programs. Have a listen. There are really bad actors who outright exploit people, who target vulnerable immigrants with promises of jobs, diplomas, and easy pathways to citizenship, promises that would never come true. Looking back, when the post-pandemic boom cooled and businesses no longer needed the additional labour help, as a federal team, we could have acted quicker and turned off the taps faster. So let's talk about the medium and the message with our front bench. Here tonight, former senior advisor to the Liberal Ontario governments of Dalton McGuinty and Kathleen Wynne, Dan Moulton, he's now a partner with Crestview Strategy. Rudy Husney is a conservative political analyst who worked as a senior advisor in Prime Minister Stephen Harper's office, or in his government, rather. Kathleen Monk is the former director of communications to the late Jack Layton. She's now the principal owner of Monk & Associates. And next to her, that's Laura Stone. She's a Queen's Park reporter for the Globe and Mail. Hi, everybody. Good to see hey. you. Happy Monday. Hey. Uh, Laura, Good happy to see you in studio here. So we'll, we'll start with you. Um, why now? Like, the, the announcement, the official announcement around permanent immigration levels came out three weeks ago and there's been a number of other policy announcements mm -hmm. prior to that. Why do you think like they needed or they felt they needed to do this kind of a thing now? I think they need to hammer home the message and I don't think it worked the first time. I think probably their internal polling and what they're hearing from both within their own party but from just regular Canadians mm -hmm. is people are upset about this, uh, their concerns about immigration. And I think it's it's primarily tied to housing, to health care accessibility, these issues about services for for everyone in this country and people are, are feeling like there's just not enough accessibility on that front. Um, I think it's quite stunning that that the Prime Minister has, has done this video and kind of reiterated his points of, of at least turning part of the blame on himself. I know he has justification for it, but he does kind of admit his error or his government's error, which you don't hear every day from, from Mr. Trudeau. There's been a lot of defensiveness. And, and on this one, I think it shows how sensitive they are to the issue and that on that front, things aren't going well. And so now they're kind of trying to turn around as a government taking action. And so they're trying to kind of get all this, this news out or react to some of the numbers that we've been seeing in the media that we've been reporting on to others and, and at least kind of admit to the public that they could have done things differently. What do you think the motivation is, Dan? And what message do you hope they, do they, do you think they hope they land? Uh, well, honestly, Vasya, I think I'll start by just saying I, I think this was an effective strategy on the part of the Liberals because we're talking about it, because people are noticing it. It was a uh, number one trending video today. As you mentioned, it got you know, 500,000 views. I checked it a few hours ago. It was only 450. So they're, clearly it's ticking up and they're getting a lot of attention on it. And, and the reason I'll say that's effective and interesting is because when the Prime Minister announced the original policy that this video is about, he acknowledged then that they had made a mistake, that they had mm -hmm. failed. Um, uh, which he has repeated here in the video today. Uh, we're talking a lot more about it. It's getting a lot more notice because it was in this video. And so that, to me, immediately says this is an effective move on their part. These are complex policies with uh, big impacts on the lives of Canadians, as Laura points out. Um, and it's difficult, I think, for the government to imagine that it's communicating effectively from a podium in Ottawa when they're making policy announcements or, frankly, even in the House of Commons, as opposed to a style of communication that's direct to camera, that's a lot more accessible to people, they can view on their own time, and is in a format that they're a little bit more familiar with digesting in their, their everyday life. And so I think this is a really effective move. It's one that, frankly, Pierre Pelliev has used to his advantage over the course of the last number of years. And I'm pleased to see the Prime Minister leading in this direction. I think we need to see more of it. I think it will help to uh, get their message to break through. 
Rudy, let's separate those two points. Your take on, do you agree with Dan that the medium is affected? And what about the message? Do you think the message he's delivering will resonate? Do you really think that people will watch this on their iPhone and feel sorry for the guy when they cannot afford a house or a home because of immigration? I mean, come on, it's not because a fault is confessed that it's half forgiven. I mean, it's a complete change from the core liberal ideas. Remember 2015 tweet, everybody's welcome, come to Canada. How many times, and I come from Quebec, how many times in Quebec, there was Roxham Road, there was the Premier of Quebec saying, we have too many immigration, be careful, be careful. Even their own civil servant released a memo saying, be careful on immigration, and the government didn't want to act. So what is he going to do next? Is he going to say next week, hey, the deficit is too high, I'm sorry, I'm going to lower it. Oh, sorry, <laughs> we doubled the debt. Hey, you know, what's, what's the next shoe to drop? I mean, all the core liberal values are just collapsing. I think, uh, Kathleen, I'll get your, your, you to weigh in on that. And if you could also parse apart, because I, I get from the messaging perspective, there were a lot of other factors at play. But this is one of those areas that the federal government had to levers. Like the, when yeah. population started to explode two years ago, they didn't necessarily have to wait tears. I think yeah. the fact that, as Laura said, it's one of the first times we've heard the prime minister sort of say, like, oh, yeah, maybe we could have done something a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Like, do Canadians... Will they be in a forgiving spirit? And do you think this issue matters? Well, I think the first thing to note is that for sure that the consensus around immigration, that more immigration is better, is no, no longer in Canada. The over majority of Canadians want immigration levels to be lowered. But the problem is that while I think it's an effective strategy, this is actually the second time the Liberals have done something like this. Announced a policy and then about a month later come out with a video like this. So really, in terms of the tactic is effective, I just don't understand what's always taking them so long, right? <laughs> They did this with the capital gains, right? So they announced the capital gains in the, in the federal budget. A month later, May 16th, they came out with a video on that with Trudeau. Same thing. They announced this policy and used almost verbatim language on October 25th. We didn't get the balance right. We should have turned out earlier. We're changing things. We're cutting it by 20%. And then it takes three and a half weeks to get this video out. So I don't know what is taking them so long. The tactic is right. I mean, Dan's right on this. More people will be seeing this video than certainly paid attention to the news release on October 25th. Another reason for why that is that if you recall, rewind tape back to October 25th, you know, Trudeau was in a leadership crisis there. And yeah. all the questions at the time were about his caucus wanting him to leave. So so maybe that the, the cacophony that was happening at that time didn't let this news kind of break through. And now in light of the immigration being on the front burner in our U.S. neighbors is really important to push this message home. My sense is that they recognize, they, they I'm sure, Laura, have internal polling that shows them yeah. this is a bigger issue than you might assume with voters. I know certainly I was in an Uber yesterday in Toronto. It's the first, mm -hmm. yeah, listen to your show during the day. And I voted liberal every single time since I immigrated here since 1985. But because he, this was his, the system is out of control. I, I, I decided I'm going to change my vote. Like, I think there must be some implicit recognition here mm -hmm. that this could be a potentially big issue for voters. Yeah, I think, I think that's exactly what's happening. And that's why you're seeing the prime minister taking responsibility for it or being the face of it. I think there's kind of a good cop, bad cop thing happening here with, with Immigration Minister Mark Miller, who's kind of taking the harder line. And then, mm. and then Prime Minister Trudeau kind of comes out and it rolls up his sleeves and it has a bit of a softer video. Um, I think it's, it's very difficult. I think he has to walk a very fine line when he's talking about these things because, as Rudy notes, it's tied so closely. You know, diversity is our strength. Everyone is welcome here. It's tied so closely with really the core of, of who Justin Trudeau is mm. as a politician. Uh, but I think he does recognize, even within immigrant communities, that that you know the, the numbers have exploded, That's right? right? So um, I think he he knows that his government has to say something, but he kind of is trying to play off of his own immigration minister, I think. On, on sending that message out to the masses. Do you think, Dan, that's how they're trying to strike the balance? Because to everyone's point, it is a huge part of the liberal brand and worked very successfully for them in 2015, in contrast to Stephen Harper's government at the time, to be welcoming to, to immigrants. This message in this video is a hard pivot from that. Well, no, I, I don't agree. First of all, it's been a core part of the liberal brand for more than 50 years. I mean, this is a huge part of liberal identity. It's a huge part of the way that liberals for generations have connected with uh, ethnic communities across the country. I don't think this is a big departure. And I think the clear thing the prime minister tried to do in the video is identify the bad actors, right? He, he focused very heavily on uh, 
post-secondary institutions and other actors that were taking advantage of some of the temporary immigration programs that he talks about at length in the, in the video. And so I, I don't know that I would agree that this is some big departure from liberal policy on pro-immigration. It's not as though the Liberal Party is taking a you know hard turn to the right against immigration in this country. I think they're trying to point out that they made mistakes, that uh, the influx of immigration, particularly through temporary programs that was designed to address labor shortages during the pandemic, wasn't effectively managed. They've identified that here. But I don't think this is some big sea change for the party in terms of its approach to immigration. Uh, I, you know, you I don't will think say, even 20, like a 20 percent cut isn't a big sea change? Well, I mean, when the numbers were where they were for the last two years, that 20 percent cut isn't as dramatic as I think a lot of people are trying to make it out to be right now, frankly. Rudy, what would you say to that? Look, the reality is that when we were in government in 2015, the numbers were at 250,000, for example, for residents. They're the one who doubled it. When it comes to students, also it was also around 200,000. They're the one who tripled it, even to more than one million. And you're saying bad actors, bad actors. I'm sorry, but under the Harper government, we had what we called visas, especially for Mexico. What did Trudeau did when he got elected? He got rid of the visas. And all of a sudden, what did, it, what did he do last month or a couple of months ago? He reestablished the visas, the same visas that the Harper government had, that for ideological reason, the liberals say, oh, no, no, we're going to take out the visas, for example, for Mexico. And all of a sudden, he again changes his policy. So he changes his policy on immigration. He changes his policy on visas. And he's the one who's broken the system. And do you really think that with that video that you're going to watch, they're going to first feel sorry and have to trust the guy to fix the thing that he broke? I mean, come on. Kathleen, I'll give you the last word. I just, just point out, like, I think in the Mexico situation, for example, that's a little bit more specific to the idea of human smuggling and what was happening. Mm -hmm. Basically going through our border into the United States, it was primarily Mexicans. Once they reinstated the visas, there's, it's no longer primarily Mexicans, but it is now primarily Indian, uh, Indians with student visas, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and the second part of that is I get the bad actor. Like, there's not innocent actors in this. A lot of the people that the prime minister identified are bad actors. Mm -hmm. There were bad actions taken. But like in general, immigration is still overseen by the federal government. Yeah, I think that a, a couple things. I think that Canadians want to see that when people immigrate here, that the kind of people that we want for our, to grow our economy. So they're nurses, you know, they're other maybe uh, personal support workers or construction, right? We need a lot of construction workers, but they also want them to have a pathway to citizenship. So, I mean, I kind of, you know, I, I, I take my colleague's point, but I do think that the apology will go some distance with Canadians. Like when people admit they get something wrong and and they try to fix it, I think Canadians will recognize that. They, they made the bad choice. They should have turned off the taps earlier, as, as Mr. Trudeau said. But the thing is, we have to get immigration right, and that is getting the people we need. We're already seeing from the Chamber of Commerce, we're seeing from, uh, you know, Mr. Houston, who's up for election in Nova Scotia, concerned about access mm -hmm. to health care workers that they need in that province. So I think it's going to be delicate balance, and we can't just give up on all immigration whatsoever. Okay, I mean, I, hope, I don't think anybody is. No, I don't, no. To be clear, no, no. I think even the opposition the, parties are pretty careful. Yeah, we I, go I back to the Harper's so level government. I got, yeah. I got, well, we go back to the Harper's level. Not quite that level, level. but yeah. yeah. I, I got, I got <laughs> to take a quick break. Uh, we'll be discussing this for sure Keep uh, as, the, as the time passes, I should say. We're going to switch gears, though, after a short break and turn to an interesting meeting with Donald Trump. We're back in a moment. Thank you. 